If you feel frustrated with Unity's UI system, then this video is for you. We are going to build a system on top of Unity's UI system and use that system to build more complex UIs. You will not only learn a few things about Unity's UI system, but you'll also learn how to build a stronger foundation and get less frustrated, hopefully. On Twitter, or X I should say, there was a clean code discussion that exploded some time ago and there were arguments like, uh, hey, the leaked source code of the original Far Cry shows that bad code can still make a million dollar franchise. And that was entertaining for sure. Now what does clean code have to do with building user interfaces in Unity? Well, 99% of UI related tutorials here on YouTube are teaching you game jam level code. You know, it compiles, it looks kind of nice, but somehow it's still frustrating to maintain and to extend, and in other words, it's fragile. Now, how do we bump it up? How do we go to the next level and actually enjoy building UI? Hey, wh what are you doing? You cannot just enjoy building UIs, that's not possible. Who, who enjoys building UIs? I it is possible, let, let me show you. Maybe, I'll believe if I see it. By the way, stay until the end of the video because I have some great resources to help you build killer UIs. So, I think that Unity's UI system, like many other systems, is slightly, just slightly misunderstood. What does every tutorial do? You put the UI together, create a controller for the UI, the controller handles the data and updates the UI. And that's it. This is just enough to learn how the UI system itself works. I don't think this is the way to build your dream game because, well, everyone seems to hate that aspect of game development. Somehow you always end up with a messy hierarchy that you never want to touch ever again. Instead, I believe that you should be building your own UI framework. This means that you create a layer on top of Unity's UI system and then use that layer in your actual game to build more complex UIs. Let me show you how it looks like and then we are going to implement one version of that. Unity gives us components like image, button, text, as well as components for controlling the layout, like vertical layout group, layout element, content size fitter, and a bunch more. All elements of the UI have a rack transform, and it's up to us to build a user interface with all those things. Now, just like a typical web framework, we will prepare new elements that we can quickly assemble to build complex interfaces. Here's a list of what we could have. A view. One style could be a header, a body, and a footer. A few pre-configured containers that allows us to easily order things horizontally or vertically. A scrollable container, for example. Buttons, an element for different text, like titles, headers, and bodies. And maybe other special elements, like a row, card, or whatever. Every new element is a prefab. They each have a custom script and are all configured using scriptable objects. What's also special and pretty cool is that each element will be made in isolation. You will see what I mean. At the end, you will have a small collection of elements that you can then reuse to build your actual user interface. This is the idea. Let's implement one basic version and there's an emphasis on one basic version because there are many ways to do that, all right? And no matter what technique you use, building UIs takes a lot of time. So. Take this as a disclaimer. Here we are in one of the latest Unity 2022 LTS versions. Let's start by creating a new canvas and I like to change the UI scale mode to scale with screen size and then change the reference size to full HD. The first element that we are making is a simple view. Open the anchor presets and with shift and alt we make this stretch in all directions. Let's create a new script that we call view as well and already put it on our view game object. This view will have some containers organized vertically, so let's add a vertical layout group. We will control the padding in a different way. For now, we will tick the control child size. Next, we add our containers. For that, I will use an image component so we see what's happening. Right click, UI, then image. We want a container top, container center, container bottom. I'll change the color of each so we see their sizes. Now we want the center container to take more space than the other two. We can achieve that by adding a layout element and enable flexible height. There we can increase the value to something like five and now this element will take five times more space than the other ones. Let's just create a second script that we call view SO for scriptable object and we are ready to write some code. Let's build a small skeleton. 
we will keep a reference to the scriptable object that we will write later. That object will hold the data how this component should configure itself. Then let's grab a reference to each container. We take the game object to keep this pretty general. We don't know yet all the things we want to do with it. Then we know they each have an image component, so we will also store a reference to those, as well as a reference to the layout group. Then we will define three methods, setup, configure and init, which will just call the two other methods. In awake, we will call init, and this will be kind of the structure for every script that we will write. In setup, we just grab all references that we need. For the configure method, we will do that after viewSO. First, let's make our scriptable object viewSO. We start small, all right? For the moment, we will store the padding and the spacing. If you check Unity's documentation, you will see that the padding is of type rect offset, which is really useful. That's it for that. Now we can write our configure method to read the values from the scriptable object and configure the layout group. Now, a small trick, when you change a value and want the UI to update, you have to mark the component as dirty. There are a few ways to do it. And as a first step, we can implement an onValidate method that will be called in the editor only. This is triggered when something changes or when you hit save. And as a bonus, if you have Odin Inspector, you could make the init as a button as well, so you can manually trigger it. It is really cool. Back in Unity, let's drag and drop the references. Then in the data folder, right click and let's create a new ViewSO asset. We can link that one up as well. Now, instead of editing the layered group directly, we can set the value in the scriptable object. The values will automatically sync because of the own validate method. Now, sometimes the UI will not update. You need to make sure it refreshes or that it knows that it's dirty. As I said, there are a few ways to, to do that and fix this. Scriptable objects are really useful to share data. For UIs, we can define a theme object that will store some colors. That way we can have consistent colors across all our elements. Let's create a new theme SO and define some colors. A primary color for the background and one for the text. We do the same for a secondary one and a tertiary one. And why not add a default color for disabled elements? This theme SO will be added to all other scriptable objects. This means we update the view SO to have a theme. Finally, in the configure method of the view, we can read the color values to colors different containers. Let's save and in Unity, we can create a new theme asset define some colors, make sure the alpha is at one because by default it's zero. Now we can add the team to the view asset. All right, if we change some colors and force some updates, it will recolor itself. Awesome. The last step is to drag and drop the view into our prefab folder. This view is now done for now. It's basic, but it's a good start. Next up, let's create some text. We can hide the view with this small eye icon and let's create a new empty game object that is going to be a text title. It will stretch in all direction. You will see why later. Then we add a text component as a child. It will also stretch fully. The text will be bold and the alignment set as middle. Those values could also be set with a scriptable object that we will make, by the way. For most elements, we create an empty parent game object because this will allow us to easily add padding, for example. Now let's create two scripts, text and text SO. Text goes on the game object and let's now write some code. Starting with the scriptable object, we will take a reference to the theme because we will color the text based on that. Then for this demo, let's configure the font and the size. That's all for now. The text will follow the same structure as the view class. We will have an init method that we call on awake and on validate. And if you think that we could avoid duplicating code by creating a common class, you are absolutely right and we will do that afterwards. For now, we keep a text SO reference and a private reference to the text component, which uses text mesh pro UGUI. We grab the reference in the setup method and we configure by setting the font and the size. For the color, I keep it commented out because I would like to show you another ID. I'll create a new script and make this a pure C-sharp enum. It will have three possible values, primary, secondary, or tertiary. What I want to do is allow a style configuration on the text. So you can say, this text is primary, this one is secondary, etc. The style is used to decide what color to use. We pass a style to the theme and the theme gives us back the right color. Final step is to update the theme SO script with the two new methods. One to get the background color and one to get the text color based on the style. Back to Unity, we create a text SO asset. I'll call the first one title, set the size to 75, choose the font and set the theme. Now select the text game object and drag and drop the text asset in place. With a drop down, we can choose the style easily. 
All right, make this a prefab and that's ready as well. Let me delete it from the scene and show the view again. Look, by creating our UI elements in isolation, we can assemble them and they will behave correctly. Remember that the title was stretching in all directions. And if I drag and drop it into the top container of my view, look at this magic. It stretches in all directions, just like we set it up. This is great. This means that creating UI elements in isolation is a viable method. I can add it to another container. It will respect its configuration. This is pretty cool, but we are not done. I still have a few things to show you. First improvement, we will create a new class that all our future components will derive from. Let's call it custom UI component. It will have the code that was duplicated in our view and text classes. This can be an abstract class, so we can't just use this directly. We write our awake method init and on validate. Setup and configure needs to be handled by the implementation of that class. So we can define them as abstract as well. Now we should do some small refactoring. The view class will extend our custom UI component and this will give us a few errors. Those are the changes we have to make. Remove the awake and the init and the on validate. Make setup and configure as public overwrite and that's all. We should do the same changes on the text class. Now it's super clean. So far so good. Make sure you like this video and subscribe if you want more original game dev content. I'll repeat it. This is one version of building a layer on top of Unity's UI system. All right, let's move on. Let's do a button and we will finish off with a few quick components that do not even require code. Again, we build it in isolation, create an empty game object. This time we will keep it at a size that is fixed like 220 times 70. We add a real button as a child and I like to change the sprite to a perfect square so that all corners are sharp. For the width and height, we can make it slightly smaller than its parent, so 200 times 50. This creates some small padding around. And that's pretty much it. We keep it very simple for this tutorial. Let's create a button script. And at that point, I realized that button is not a great name because it conflicts with the standard UI button. So I renamed it to custom button and Maybe it would be a good idea to prefix every class with something you need like TIG view, TIG button and so on. Anyway, as always, the script goes on the parent and let's write some code. We extend custom UI component and start implementing the methods. In setup, we grab a reference to the button and a reference to the text. As public fields, we can have the theme, the style, and as an example, we can add a UI event for the onClick event. If you saw my other video about building the ultimate event system, you know we can use that everywhere in here. I do not use it on purpose here because now we just focus on exploring how to create your own layer on top of Unity's UI system and how that could look like, but feel free to extend it with the other event system. In configure, we can change the color of the button. For that, we have to take a copy of the color block. We can't just modify it directly. We just set the background and the text color. And finally, we define a public onClick method that invokes our own event on the top. All right, we set the theme, we can set the style, and last step is to connect the button's own click event to our script. That way we avoid having to fiddle with the children in our components. Good, this is a primary button, make it a prefab and done. We can create variants, right click, create prefab variant, call it button tertiary for example, change the style and that button is also ready to use. All right, as a final part of this video, we are going to build a few reusable components to help you build a bit more complex UIs. Since we have scriptable objects, it's very easy to create new configurations. We can define a text asset for titles that we already have. Let's do one for headers. That one will have a smaller font and one for bodies that will be even smaller. Once done, we can create prefab variants of the text object and assign the corresponding asset. Very easy. Then let's create a new container to help us organize our UI. Create a new game object, make it stretch, and let's say that this will be a component to have columns. So we add a horizontal layout group and either we go ahead and create a script to manage it, or for this example, we just configure it directly. Rename it as container columns and save it as prefab. To use it, it's simple. Drag and drop it into another container and then put your object inside. Here I will put two buttons inside. And actually I want it aligned differently. So I will change the prefab and it will update our UI. All right, next one is fun. Let's make a container for scrollable content. It stretches in all direction and as a child we will add a scroll view. Again, make it stretch. The content is where we put our stuff in and if the content extends the size of the view, we will be able to scroll. This means that the content should have the correct size, which is not 
straightforward in Unity, but there is a trick. For visualizing how it will work, I will add an image and make a bunch of duplicates. On the content, I will add a vertical layout group so that we have rows. So if I play, it will not scroll correctly. The reason is that the content is not taking the size of what it actually contains. We could resize it by hand, but what if we fill the content at runtime? This will not work. So here's the solution. On content, add a content size fitter and set the vertical fit to preferred size. Now it will automatically adjust. We can also deactivate the horizontal scrolling and now it scrolls correctly. Save it as a prefab and we can test it in our view. If you drag and drop it into the center container, it will fill the space and behave as expected. The main advantage of this approach is also the main disadvantage. You need to plan things in advance and the further you go, the less flexible you become. Once you start nesting prefabs and prefab variants, it will become increasingly difficult to change how basic elements work. And this is not easy to explain and to show because you will simply reach a point where you'll be like, oh, shit, I have to redo this stuff. But overall, it's a good approach to quickly build new views and most importantly, keep things consistent across your entire application. Now, we just covered the most basic aspect of the first layer. That's where we create our own Lego pieces. The next layer is to implement the logic that will actually control all the data that will be displayed by the user interface. So this video is to kind of take the temperature of the room and see if you like it or not. And if you do, let me know because then I will prepare the next part of this system for another video. By the way, on my Discord server, there is an inspiration section with links to certain resources that can really help you build killer UIs. Feel free to pass by, discuss about game dev and share what you are building. The link is below. As always, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time and now go work on your game.